Hey guys, today we're going to cover formatted searches and I'll go through a couple of examples on them. But first, check out www.battleshipcobra.com. I have an SQL for SAP Business One course and a Crystal Reports for SAP Business One course as well. They're self-paced online courses. You can go from basically knowing nothing to learning a lot about it and making your own queries or making your own crystal reports or editing your own crystal reports or your own crystal reports layouts. I make videos weekly at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Mondays. If you like this video, like it. If you want to see more, subscribe. Check out all my other videos. I have tons of them and they'll all help you with your SAP Business One system and make you more efficient in general. If you want to join the notification squad, click the bell and it'll send you an email every time I make a video so you don't miss them, especially if you don't come to YouTube all the time. It's a great way to stay up to date with all my videos. You might hear my son Max playing Fortnite in the background. He's playing Fortnite with his friends. It's kind of late, but it's something fun that they do and I'm not going to go yell at him, you know, quarantine life, whatever. So I'm going to explain what exactly a formatted search is, how to use one, and give you a couple of examples. Let's go. So formatted searches are basically uh, an easy way to customize fields to pull different pieces of data. If you don't have B1UP, it's the only way for you to pull data to other fields. So it's something where you can do like a basic selection list. You can do um, basically triggered information pulls but it is nothing like B1UP. B1UP has like multiple multiple triggers. You can do multiple triggers per field for um, query. Formatted searches basically are limited to one trigger. They're useful in some situations. They're really great in some situations, but they get really kind of limited. But anyway, I'll show you how to do them. If you don't have B1UP, this at least might solve an issue that you have, and it'll show you how to do basic queries. So here we go. Let's take one that I don't have many customizations on. The problem is I have like tons and tons of uh, B1UP customizations on all my forms. So that's how I normally do it. So you have remarks here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna say when you change uh, the code, pull the remarks of that BP, okay? So what you need to know is view system information, view system information. So again, you hold your mouse over this and you can see OPCH card code, OPCH card name and you can see the uh, item. So ultimately what I'm gonna need is item four or item 54. I'm gonna go for item four for now and I'll show you the dynamic syntax and then I'm gonna put that into this remarks field here. Let's just go to this vendor. What I wanna be able to do is take this quick notes or remarks. This is usually called remarks and I'll just say uh, remember to charge freight fees or something like that. Okay, update that. So I want to be able to pull that into my document every time that I load a business partner. So this is a good function for a formatted search. It's a single field trigger and it's simple enough that you could do just the one query. So it really is just a query with some special syntax. So I need to push my view system information and I can see that I need uh, here and in the bottom it says notes, OCRD notes. Okay, OCRD and notes. So I go to, I'll do this again actually, tools, queries, query generator. OCRD is the table. That's always the table for business partner master data. And then I need notes, so I can see notes here. So I'm gonna select notes. So I know that I need the only the one, I only need the one business partner, not everyone. So I need a where clause. So I go where, card code, and then that's basically it to start. Okay, so I have the basis, so I'm gonna select notes from the business partner master data table, where, card code, and then what I need to do is go back to here, and this is where that item thing comes into play. So you have item four, so this is how it goes. Push your little thing there, equals dollar sign, dollar sign, 4.0.0. So that's gonna say, Give me the notes from the business partner master data where the card code equals, and then I'm bringing the card code from this item. Okay. Save as FMS. We're going to go, what is this one? OPCH. OPCH uh, auto notes, auto remarks. 
Okay, save it. So you have to save it like that. This will be pretty useless. You can go here and test it. When it's here without a trigger, you can go tools, uh, da -la 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 -la, queries, user queries, formatted searches, OPCH auto remarks. Pew. And then you'll see it pulls the data. So this will give you the data there and you see that it's replaced. It's replaced your 4.00 with the value from there to finish off your query and it gives you the right information, okay? So to install that now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go two remarks, shift F2, click in the field, shift F2. I use it to find values not been, some people call it UDVs, I always call them formatted searches. Push yes. Without a search, search in existing valid values, which you can set the values if you want, or search in existing user defined values according to saved query. Click that one, click open saved queries, formatted searches. If you had this window open when you saved your query, you have to close it completely. It is a, I don't know if that bug still exists, but if you have this open, make a query, save it, it doesn't refresh in any way. And then if you try to sign it, it won't show it, but so just close your query manager. OPCH auto remarks, double click. So that's gonna do that. So by default, if I push update now, it'll just manually wanna trigger itself, but I can push auto refresh when field changes, display saved user values, use the default one. Click here, and I think it's called customer code, even though it's vendor, customer vendor code, okay? So you put that on there, update. And now you see this little thing here. You can manually trigger it using, uh, just clicking the magnifying glass and it'll pull that. But because I had it set to automatically do that, I'm gonna go to modules, purchasing, if you reserve invoice, cause I wanted something that didn't have a lot of B1 up customization. Now I go vendor, vendor one, tab, and you can see it's already there. Boom, it refreshed based on when I clicked the vendor. So this can be put anywhere. You can do, you could put numeric fields that uh, put information into different places. You could do calculations limitedly, you can do, uh, date math limitedly to you can set all these sorts of things based on certain stuff and there's certain keywords But that's basically a simple one. So again, I can click that and it'll refresh it Alt shift F2 that's going to give you this list and then you can just click without searching fields to turn it off completely I didn't push enter there Alt shift F2 Refresh regularly you got to watch out because it's going to run it every time that you reload that form so if you have something that's like that and you're gonna refresh regularly, um, it may always send your form into update mode. It kinda doesn't work great. With uh, B1UP you can set specific fields to not affect form modes. So in B1UP you can have display fields and those display fields will just display information. They won't cause an update to be triggered. So you can have something like account current account balance on uh, a sales doc on a marketing document where it won't uh, force any sort of updates. It'll just be a for information field and you can make it read only to with B1UP. So it's way better. But for now that's gonna work. Okay, so the other thing you can do here, just a basic example is say you wanna pull notes from an item into a specific field in here. So kind of the same thing. So here's extended description. This was just a un uh, UDF we added here. So if you want information in here, let's pop into, let's just use a keyboard. Click this one, go to the item master data for it. So let's say remarks. So we'll just say uh, lots of information here and specs for someone to remember. So we'll just save that. So it's really the same process. There's just a slightly different dynamic syntax for it. And there's lots of uh, forum posts on this stuff too. So view, system information, hold your mouse over any of the fields in case this one, bottom, OITM, user text. Tools, queries, query generator. OITM is the table. You can sort it, user text. User text. So you want user text. What are you gonna use as the main key you're gonna use the item code, so that's the first one. So you're gonna say where item code. I'm gonna close this. So the trick here is you look in the item code and you hold your mouse over it, you can see at the bottom, 38. So the item is 38. The column now, because we're in a matrix, is one. 
And then, so you just need those two things. So here's a little trick. You go user text where this, where uh, item code equals dollar sign, square bracket, dollar sign, 38 is the item, dot one is the column, dot zero is just, that's how it goes, and that's it. So if you wanted to use like one of these other ones, quantity, you can use column 11, so it'll be, you know, uh, quantity will be 38.11.0, warehouse would be 38.22.0, so you can see how that would be referenced there. And you can reference multiple uh, columns. It doesn't matter, you could do that however you want. Obviously B1UP has way more detailed dynamic syntax system. This is just really basic, something to show you that you can do right now. You don't need B1UP to do this. This is totally out of the box SAP and it'll, it'll work. If this kind of functions the way you wanna function, then that'll be good. Execute, so this is what you need. Again, it won't return any SQL value. It'll give you an error, but that's fine. So this is what you need here. It won't give you correct values because it's it doesn't work like SQL it needs to. It is a special query that obviously this dynamic syntax gets replaced by information, but it is what we need to see and what we need for what we're doing. Save as, format search, OPCH, auto item remarks, okay? Close that. So it's the same thing here, really. We go here, extended description, click in it, shift F2. Yes, here, you notice I closed query manager already. Open save query, format search, item remarks, auto refresh here. And then we look for the little, 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 uh, item number, boom. So what we're gonna do is we can manually trigger that, but what we can do here is do another row. So the next time you do it, you're gonna see here, boom. Lots of information, view, fit column width, and we should see all this information here pulled from it, and it just does it that way. So in certain situations, formatted searches are actually quite good and will do a lot of pulling of information for you. So if there's dropdowns you need that are defaults, you can use UDFs on Business Partners, UDFs on Item Master, you could just set something as a total default that's just random. Um, you can use these as selection lists too here, so I'll show you a kind of a final example. So say you wanted a shorter list of items, tools, queries, query generator. So we're gonna go OITM. We're gonna do, we need the first field is the field that's gonna be selected. And then the second field will just be there. You could put a whole bunch of fields too. I'm just gonna say top 10. You can filter these by like a specific group. You can filter them by whatever, active, inactive and all those things. But that's it. You can just do pull top 10 list, save, save as. Format search, horrible YouTube example list, okay? Perfect, so now you can go in here, just go Shift F2, yes. I don't know why you'd really wanna do this exactly, but a lot of people do like a maybe a shorter list. Don't put any refresh on there. And now it'll be here just as a selection, and then you can just go, okay, let's do this one. Tab, it doesn't have any description or anything, but. Uh, I should just say something. So these are all horrible examples. Tab, there you go. So we're just picking one of these particular things and that gave you a shorter selection list. And you could do that however you want. Again, relating into a specific vendor, you can do a short list of items that are more commonly sold. You could do, you know, all sorts of different things and use it as a selection list. Remember Alt Shift F2 without search and you'll just remove it. So I'm just gonna take these out of here. So as you can tell, there are a lot of drawbacks to doing that. If that's the only way you can do things, that's great. Um, I really advocate for B1UP obviously, cause you can do multiple tricks. You can still use format searches if you want with B1UP if there's some reason. Um, they don't really play well together with blah, 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 performance. Um, you can do certain things with, with formatted searches though, obviously you could see that they're useful. And if it's something that one of those scenarios kind of works for you, or there's a simple calculation and you want to do something like that, it could, it could make your life a lot easier. Uh, the, again, the limitations of formatted searches, you can only trigger off of one field. With B1UP, you can trigger off of multiple fields at once. It's amazing. So you could say if this field or this field or that field changes, then update this field. You don't have to do all these hacks. I remember back in the day before I was really familiar with B1UP, I, you know, it's trying to do, you'd always try to do like a, a string of, you know, you'd try and 
refresh on this one, then refresh on that one, then refresh on that one. So if you changed one, it would like chain to make the change. So even if you did an update of the first one, it would just trigger like a null update of the second one and then it would change the second one. It was like, you know, I got some stuff done. It's not that efficient, but anyway, I hope some of these things will help you and it gave you kind of an overview of what a formatted search is or a UDV, some people call it. Check out www.battleshipcobra.com for my crystal reports for SAP Business One course, my crystal reports for SAP Business One course. Self-paced online courses on Udemy. Not too expensive for what you get. It'll take you from zero to hero. If you like this video, like it. If you wanna see more, subscribe. Check out all my other SAP Business One videos. Click that notification bell to join the no notification squad. If you don't come to YouTube all the time, it'll send you an email whenever I upload a new video. I make weekly videos, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Mondays, so be there or be square. Add me on LinkedIn, linkedin.battleshipcobra.com, and I also announce my new videos there. If you're a LinkedIn person, just uh, add me to your community. No, add me to your connections. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye for now.